Hello? Yeah. Yeah, what's the news? Oh. Is that so? Well, I'm sorry to hear that. Um, there's nothing I can really do, is there? Okay. All right, thanks for letting me know. Bye. Hey guys, I have an update. So I just got off the phone and uh, I have some news from the little pussy ass bitch club. They just called me and they said I can no longer be part of the team since I just hit three reps of 315 at the gym the other day. And so I guess they're letting me go. I've been part of that club for a very long time and I kind of, I kind of feel shitty and deserted and um, I'm not really sure what to do right now. I'm kind of pissed off too. Alright, well, maybe I need some air. So I'm in LA right now. This is the 405, and if you don't know what the 405 is, it just it sucks. You never want to take the 405 ever. And then, over there, those buildings, that's LA. Um, if you ever want to be happy with your life, don't go there ever. It sucks. 300 subscribers equals one jump. So I've done some thinking and I'm going to put the past behind me and embrace my new bench max. Um, just so you all know, I really do bench 315. I'm going to give you a chest flex real quick. <laughs> Alright, so uh, yeah. If you don't know who I am, I'm Will Magner Fitness. Witness the fitness. Finish your spinach. Shout out bad boys online. Peep the featured YouTube channel. So I basically hit 315 on bench for the first time last week. And I want to share with you guys what I've done and how I've overcome the last couple plateaus and made it through the long and difficult road to hitting 315. The two main ingredients to create a big chest is one, fitness, and two, spinach. By the end of this video, you will have learned something. I want you to be able to take away tips from this video and apply them to your workouts immediately. Simple as that, I'm not going to get into a long-winded discussion about why everything works. I'm just going to tell you what I do to see the best results in the gym. At the end of the day, building a huge chest is not rocket science. It comes down to a bunch of tips and tricks and consistency. So let's get into it. The very first thing you should do when you get into the gym is kiss every hot girl in the gym. If she's not hot, don't give her a kiss. So after I kiss every single hot girl in the gym, the second thing I do is I warm up my shoulders, my rotator cuffs, and I spend about five minutes just stretching out all my muscles and making sure my joints are warm before hitting some super heavy weights. So after I warm up my shoulders, my triceps, my rotator cuffs, and obviously my chest a little bit, I'm gonna plan on doing two to three compound exercises. You should plan on hitting flat presses, incline, decline, and even reverse dumbbell press, which is awesome for your upper chest. For all of these compound exercises, I think one of the most important things to keep in mind for chest is that you should be doing dumbbell presses almost exclusively. Not only does dumbbell press force you to use a bigger variety of muscle fibers when you work out, but it allows you to more completely activate all of those muscle fibers as well. One of the biggest keys to building muscle is activating as much muscle fiber as possible when you do your workout. So obviously you can build muscle with bench press, but I'm in it for efficiency and when I do a workout, I wanna hit the gym and use the most effective method possible to build more muscle. And guess what? The most effective method possible is dumbbell presses. So I know it's part of the caption of this video, but to be completely honest, I mainly do barbell presses for show. So. 315 is 345 plates on each side and it's pretty cool to finally be able to say I lift that much. So yes, I hit 315 on barbell the other day, finally, but I can say that most of my chest gains have come from dumbbell presses. So if you want to maximize your chest gains, use dumbbells. So the reason that dumbbell presses are so much more effective than barbell presses is because of the amount of muscle fiber that's actually activated. So think about your hands at the top of a barbell press and think about your hands at the top of a dumbbell press. So it's pretty much either out here or up here. And when you do a dumbbell press, you literally activate more muscle fiber. So more muscle fiber activation will lead to more muscle fiber damage, which if you eat properly and have protein every three hours and all that stuff, it will lead to more overall muscle growth. So if more muscle fiber activation actually leads to more muscle growth, then you need to cut the crap and do actual full reps. So you need to bring those dumbbells to the very bottom of your range of motion and bring them to the very top and squeeze them together 
together at the top. Another cool tip I want you to know is that you break down the most muscle fiber in the eccentric part of the workout. So you start at the top and you are breaking down the most muscle fiber as you bring the dumbbells down. So if you want your workout to hurt and you want it to be efficient and you want it to count, take your time on the way down. So you're at the top of your rep and you slowly bring it back down. When you get to the very bottom, bring it down as low as you possibly can and then push it back up. When you're at the top, squeeze those weights together and activate as much muscle fiber in your chest as you possibly can. So do four sets of six to eight reps just like I explained and I guarantee you your workout will be way more brutal than if you did it normally. So do a couple compound workouts, do flat dumbbell press, incline, decline, and then finish off with some isolation workouts. So personally for isolation workouts, I love the cable machine. I'll start down low and bring the cables up high. I'll start in the middle and bring them forward and I'll start up high and bring them down low. So basically when you're at the back of your rep, you stretch your chest out as much as possible. And when you bring the cables forwards, really squeeze the shit out of the middle of your chest and activate as much muscle fiber as possible. So my last tip for building a bigger chest is that you need to do a lot of sets. The periods in my life where I have gained the most muscle are the periods where I have done sets on sets on sets, consistently targeting the same muscle groups. For example, I would do five sets of flat press, four sets incline, four sets decline, four barbell presses, and three cables up, middle, down, in a chest workout. That's 26 total sets for your chest in one day. So if you don't believe me that you need to do that many sets per workout, look up how many sets our Lord and Savior Arnold Schwarzenegger did. So people who are intermediate to advanced, I recommend doing this workout every other day consistently. For people who are a little bit more beginners and just starting out working out, probably do it with two days in between each workout. So I told you the two main ingredients for a big chest are one, fitness, and two, spinach. So the fitness part, I already told you, that's do the workout properly. And the spinach part is your nutrition. Basically, what you need to do, what I need to do, what everyone needs to do in order to gain more muscle is to eat 30 to 40 grams of protein every three hours. So set alarms on your phone, just plan it out so you're eating plenty of food, like bring turkey breast with you, bring deli turkey, bring chicken, whatever. Eat that 30 to 40 grams of protein and you'll recover like a madman and make huge muscle gains. Um, so subscribe to my channel and I'll keep the videos coming. I'll see you guys later.